three more people were killed in separate avalanches in Colorado and Montana over President's Day weekend as the United States records its deadliest avalanche week in more than 100 years. The victims have been identified as Michael Tony Westall, 58, of Parker, Colorado, 57-year-old David Heidi, of Colorado and Craig Quito, 45, of Bozeman, Montana. Westall, a real estate investor, died Sunday morning after he was caught in an avalanche in Grant County near Rollins Pass that carried him onto a froze. Authorities said his body was found buried in snow. According to the Denver Post, Westall met one of his three sons Sunday morning in Empire to head out for a day of snow. He was described as someone who always wanted to spend time with his family. Scroll down for video Tony was just the nicest guy, the most generous guy, his best friend and business partner, Byron Nix told the Denver Post. Westall is survived by his wife, Jamie, three sons, Reed, Ryan and Tyler, and his daughter, Mackenzie. Also on Sunday. Backcountry skier Quito was fatally injured when the forest slope he and a companion were climbing cracked without warning, collapsed and swept him downhill. According to the National Avalanche Center, the avalanche was triggered in Beehive Basin north of Big. Officials said Quito and the person he was with were both swept down the slope into tr His partner was not buried or injured and immediately called 911. Quito was critically injured and partially buried in snow. He later died from his injuries at Bozeman Deaconess Hospital. Quito had been the principal at Whittier Elementary School in Bozeman since 2018. His wife, Lana, told CNN that her husband was loved by his staff and had an authentic connection with kids. He was a servant to everyone and always put others first, Lana said. He was a tireless hard worker and no task was too big. Quito said her husband lived to love her and their daughters. His desire to live big, took him out in a big way. I will love and miss that constant adventuring with him by my side. Quito said that similar conditions may have led to the death of Heidi, a backcountry snowboarder whose body was found in an avalanche debris field Sunday in central Colorado. According to the National Avalanche Center, Heidi was traveling alone when he was caught and buried and rescue crews found him buried with a deployed avalanche airbag. Part of the airbag was visible in the avalanche debris but the victim's head was partially covered by The avalanche occurred around 9.30 a.m. and ran on an east-facing slope above a tree line, on a terrain feature known as Pat's Knob east of Mount Trillis. The deaths of both Colorado men in Quito and Montana over the frigid President's Day weekend show how backcountry skiers and others in the Rocky Mountain wilderness risk triggering weak layers of snow that have created the most hazardous conditions in a decade, forecasters say. At least 25 people have been killed in avalanches in the U.S. so far this year more than the 23 who died. Typically, 27 people die in avalanches in the U.S. annually. Avalanche forecasters say they have rarely seen the danger as high as it is now, and it will grow as more snow moves into the Rockies, adding weight and stress on a weak, granular base layer of snow that's susceptible to breaking apart and triggering especially wide slides on st The main culprit is that ground layer of snow that dropped in October. A dry November weakened it, which is anywhere from several inches to several feet thick, and despite more snow falling, it's stayed the consistency of granular sugar, said Dave Sin, an avalanche forecaster for the Gallatin National Forest Avalanche Center in southwestern Mont. That layer consists of large, sugary crystals that don't bond together well. It's impossible to make a snow. And when it becomes weighted down, it becomes fragile and breaks, bringing down the heavier layers on top of it. It's the weakest link in the chain. When you pile on more snow, there is always one spot that's going to break said Ethan Green, director of the Colorado Avalanche Information. Share this article share on February 6, Utah saw its deadliest avalanche in about 30 years when four backcountry skiers in their 20s died and another four dug themselves out of a 1,000-foot slide east of Salt Lakes. The skiers were identified as Stephanie Hopkins, 26, Tom Steinbrecher, 23, both of Salt Lake City, and Louis Holian, 26, of Salt Lake City, and Sarah Muffamian, 29. Of Sandy, Utah. Several factors are at play in the rash of deaths. The snowpack, which can be affected by windstorms shifting and piling snow atop weak layers, weather conditions that can change rapidly in the high altitudes of the Rockies, and the availability of public lands in the U.S. West, where people often take advantage of easily accessible national. In contrast, ski areas have long ensured their slopes are groomed, potential avalanches in their areas are triggered and nearby backcountry areas are closed before the first customers hit the lift line. It's not uncommon for skiers at Colorado's Loveland Ski Area to hear an occasional howitzer targeting danger-prone areas on wind-blown peaks approaching 13,000 feet along the continent. The ski patrols do lots of work to mitigate hazards, Zinn said. But in the backcountry, we have to be our own avalanche. Avalanche centers in Colorado, Montana, 
and Utah, as well as the U.S. Forest Service National Avalanche Center, issue daily advisories on conditions and risk levels, as well as safety and training with Colorado Governor Jared Polis and the State Parks and Wildlife Agency urged residents to check conditions this holiday weekend, citing the high date. The Colorado Avalanche Information Center issued a special advisory Monday, warning that large, Wide and long-running natural and human-triggered avalanches are like forecasters emphasize standard precautions before heading into the backcountry, had rescue gear, including a beacon, a probe to check snow conditions and a shovel. People should also check daily forecasts and keep an eye out for recent avalanche. Forecasters encourage people to take guided tours and make sure they don't go out. The bottom line is that partner rescue is the only way we have positive outcomes in the backcountry. Record cold temperatures in much of the Rockies reduce your margin for error. If you have an accident, minor injuries become serious ones, and serious ones become deadly with the compounding factor of Green said that while Terry's adventure in the wildest parts of public lands, having the freedom to go where you want comes the responsibility of taking care of yourself.